Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be covering this effect. So basically what we have here is we have a cube that has liquid inside of it and then the cube is going to fall down with that liquid still interacting with the walls of the cube. So this looks really super complicated, but believe it or not, with the flip fluids add-on, it's actually incredibly easy. Well, at least in my opinion. So I'm going to go over every single step of this process. Um, basically the basics of the actual fluid simulation itself. And then of course, as always on my Patreon, all of these files will be available to you on the second tier, second and third tier. All right, let's go ahead and hop into this thing. Man, this effect is so cool. I'm so excited to show you guys how it's done. All right, let's do it. So let me first X out of this. So I'm in a completely new file here, guys. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the light, click on our default cube, um, and then I'm going to just like raise it up a little bit. That looks good. I'm going to add in a floor, scale that up by 20. Um, and then I'm just going to go ahead and apply the scale there. Now for our cube, we're going to want to drop our cube, right? So what are we going to drop our cube onto? Well, I'm going to duplicate the cube, bring it down, go to my side view here. Let's maybe scale this up a bit. Bring this stuff up like that. That looks good. Now this is going to be the thing that our cube falls on top, uh, excuse me, on top of. I'm also going to apply the scale on that as well. And then I'm going to take my cube, maybe move it like up here, rotate it a little bit. Now the goal is to get this thing to kind of fall on the other cube and then to kind of like bounce off of it. So we're going to be doing like a rigid body simulation first. So click on our cube, go to rigid body, active, and convex hull, you should be good. Go ahead and add a rigid body to the floor, type passive. Go ahead and add a rigid body to this one, type passive, and let's just play it back and see what happens. As we can see, the cube falls and then it falls down, it looks good. Cool, and that's pretty much it. So we're gonna go with that really, really simple animation there. Now the goal here is, although we have everything moving the way we want it, we now need to actually bake these keyframes. So click on your main cube here, go to object, animation, and we're gonna click on uh, bake, oh, where is it? Uh, where is it, rigid body, bake to keyframes, there it is. And we're gonna choose the end frame, I'll just do 120. Click on okay, and now if we play this back, we basically have this entire thing keyframed. So even if we go back and we, you're gonna see there's no rigid body. So it's completely removed the rigid body. And even if you remove the rigid body from this cube as well, it will still fall down. So basically what we've done is we've taken that, that um, physics movement and we've baked it to location and rotation keyframes, which is exactly what we need. This is fantastic. So we have our cube falling down. Now how do we add liquid to it? Well, let's first add a domain. Let's go ahead and add a mesh cube scale it way up like this, bring it up, and let's go ahead and click on flip fluid domain. As you can see, it turns into a wireframe, and this is where our physics simulation will take place. This is fantastic. Now, we're gonna need a liquid. We're also gonna need something to hold our liquid. This is what's gonna hold our liquid. So go ahead and click on that, click on flip fluid, obstacle, uh, and then click on inverse. And that's gonna allow liquid to basically be trapped inside of this object. Now we need the actual liquid. So go ahead and add a mesh. I'll just add a cube, bring that up, head to wireframe mode. I'm gonna scale the cube so that it's inside of our other cube. That looks perfect. And then click on flip fluid and fluid. And so far, I believe everything should be properly set up. Let's go ahead and see if we can bake this and just see what happens. Um, I'm also going to pop out this tab here and click on auto load right down here. This is in the flip fluids option down here. So we're gonna be able to see this happening hopefully in real time here. I'm gonna go to wireframe mode. As you guys can see, our liquid is interacting with the cube. Let me highlight it so you can see it. It's interacting with the cube as it falls down which is exactly what we want. Now, again, this is a low resolution simulation. Imagine how cool this would look if it, if it was an even higher resolution. Now, I have a feeling the cube is actually gonna fall outside of the domain. If it does, we're gonna go ahead and expand the domain um, and we can re-simulate. Let's see. Okay, I think we're good actually. Look how cool that is. Very awesome, right? Let's go ahead and let this bake out to like frame, like, I don't know, 150 or so. And then once it's done, we'll just apply some materials and I'll show you guys how cool this is. 
This looks so good. Um, all right, go ahead and click on your domain. And once it gets to 150, we're just going to click on stop and pause, which is basically just going to stop our simulation. Now, you could continue it at this point if you wanted to. For now, I'm just going to pause it. All right, I'm just going to pause it about here. Let's go ahead and play this back. Fantastic. So you have our liquid moving around within our object just like that. Um, not a lot of people, I haven't seen like anybody cover this, so I was really excited to cover this. Head over to rendered view, cycles, GPU, add an HDRI just for some basic lighting here. All right, so we have our HDRI. Click on your cube right here, the one that holds the liquid, and let's just add a nice uh, glass shader to that. Um, ignore this one, we'll just give this one a different material later. All right, so we have our cube with the frosted glass. Now, if we lower that roughness, it'll look a little less frosted here. And then if you click on our main fluid cube, which I believe is this, you can just give this like a blue shader so you can see it. Oops, where is it? Let me go back to, there it is. Okay, we'll just give this like a nice blue shader so we can see what's going on here. Now let's go ahead and play this back. Cool. So as you guys can see, it is interacting with the cube very nicely. Now I wanna point something out to you guys. Notice how it's kind of seeping through the walls here. There is a workaround for that. Um, I'm gonna go back to frame zero. Now with a higher resolution, it's, it shouldn't pop through the walls like that as much. I'm actually going to add another cube around this cube. Now there, you could take this cube, scale it up just a little bit and check your keyframes and just make sure right about there it's good you could do that but keep in mind when you rebake your simulation that that fluid is then going to pop outside of those new walls so as you as you expand your cube the the fluid simulation if you rebake will then also be affected as well so once you're done baking you could just scale this cube up but if not i would make another cube and parent it to this cube and that can be the um like the outside perimeter cube which is kind of what you want anyway um, but yeah, this is looking awesome. Let me just make this more metallic here. The fluid, the low roughness. There we go. Looks cool. Um, now, another thing to consider, guys, if you do click on your domain, remember we have these from our last tutorial where we covered the basics of, um, of this add-on. If you go to Flip Fluids Materials, you can actually go ahead and make this any material you want. In my case, I had this as copper. Um, now, I'm not going to go into too much shading stuff because that is pretty much the end of the actual tutorial on how to get fluid inside of an object. Um, but yeah, that that's it, guys. Um, like I said, I'm not going to go into that other stuff just because um, we, we can cover that in a future tutorial. But as you guys can see, we have our fluid inside of our cube. The cube falls down, still contains our fluid. Um, and it just looks fantastic. Now, this is a low resolution. So imagine how cool it could look at a higher resolution, right? Let's play it back one more time for you. Wow. It just looks really good. Um, and what's cool is you can then adjust all of these settings afterwards. So if you wanted this to be even clearer cube, you could. If you wanted it to be completely frosted, which I actually think looks kind of cool, you could do that. So that's it guys, that is how you put liquid inside of a moving cube. Now remember, you have to bake to keyframes or it's not gonna work. I've tried it with just the rigid body simulation without baking to keyframes, it doesn't work. Um, if you guys can get it to work, I'll be really impressed. Message me, show me that you got it to work, I'd be really impressed. Again, this is the proven method. Um, this is what I used for my Instagram reel and I thought it turned out fantastic. Yeah, this was this is perfect. And that is how you do that, guys. So go ahead and download Flip Fluids. Um, I'll include a link to that in the description below as well. And as always, have a great day. Check me out on Instagram, TikTok, Gumroad, Discord, and Patreon. Um, all the links will be down in the description below. If you guys want access to this file, I will be putting it in the Google Drive, which has access through Patreon. So if you guys support me on Patreon, you get access to this file and many more. All right, guys, have a great day, and I will see you in the next tutorial.